Thank you all very much. As Carolyn knows, I've, I've long admired the work of Save the Children, but all of you. And uh, I apologize for the voice, but Liz and Clyde and members of the U.S. Global Leadership Coalition Board and so many of our friends, Secretary Albright, Secretary Powell, now Secretary Albright and Marcel and I traveled to China back in the 70s when I was too young to know what I was doing, but fortunately she did and it kept me out of trouble. And of course, my good friend, Secretary Powell, who uh, mentored me and worked with me over the years. And um, I want to wish you and Mrs. Powell on August 25th of this year, a happy 50th wedding anniversary. How's, how's that for knowing what's going on? This And my dear friend, Lindsey Graham, it is so good to be here with you. Lindsey and I come from opposite political uh, backgrounds, but we have worked together. We've been partners on the Appropriations Subcommittee on State and Foreign Operations, as was Senator Mitch McConnell and Senator Judd Gregg. As Marcel knows, we have worked so hard to make sure that we keep foreign aid out of partisan politics. We've had a long tradition of bipartisanship in our subcommittee. It served us well. It's rarely mentioned with all the stories about how Washington is broken. This is one area that works very well. And the mission of this coalition coalition we recognize today is to protect national security, to build economic prosperity, to strengthen humanitarian values. Lindsay, I think I can say safely for both of us, that's one we share. And in the United States Senate, both parties have worked together to pro Project American diplomatic and development leadership in a time of severe budget pressures. Tim Reeser from my office, who heads the committee, and Cole Manette are here. They know how hard we work because we understand we can't divorce ourselves from a world that's increasingly competitive. I also say it's a world that is increasingly dangerous, not just because of religious and ethnic intolerance and terrorism proliferation of nuclear weapons, but other threats like climate change, unsustainable population growth, poverty, conflict, threats to engulf parts of the Middle East and Africa when we know that we're probably going to fight more wars over water than oil in the coming generation. I worry that try as hard as we might, the United States is not responding as effectively as we should. In the next three to five decades, the world's population will grow by another two billion people. And as I mentioned before, wars we fought not over oil, but food and water. I think we ought to all be working to prevent that instead of wasting time arguing about whether to even fund family planning in the United Nations. Let's get real. this may come as a shock. I'm going to tell you a secret. This is highly classified. <laughs> but sometimes the House of Representatives doesn't always agree with what Senator Graham and I are doing. <laughs> fortunately, fortunately, there are some key Republicans and Democrats in the House. I see one, my partner from Vermont, Peter Welch here, who do work with us. At the same time that we're fighting for the necessary funds for diplomacy and development, we have to also recognize, and let's be honest about this, the money 
we get does not always achieve the results we want. There are many reasons for this. Often we don't hold foreign governments accountable when they fail to perform. We've got to start saying, you want our help, you want our money, you've got to be accountable. Let's work together. And let's stop worrying about a bureaucracy that says we have to worry about how we report on what we're doing. Let's just do it. That might make a lot more sense. And not just the big organizations and contractors. Look at the fact we have some wonderful men and women in the field, and you know many of them. Give them a free reign to do what they can do best. So the work by this coalition to highlight the importance of diplomacy and development as pillars of U.S. national security has not gone unnoticed. We're in this together, both from the defense side, State Department side, USAID. When top Pentagon officials praise the work of USAID's programs in Africa, as you know they do, you have all had a lot to do with it. When CEOs, Republicans and Democrats alike, come to Congress or write letters in support of our budget allocation, we see your hand in it. And trust me, Lindsay and I use those letters to line up votes. Now, none of this is easy. How do you tell a farmer in Vermont why it matters to the United States what happens in Yemen or South Sudan? How do you convince an auto worker in South Carolina that investing in education and infrastructure in Egypt or Haiti is good for the United States? We know it is, but we have to get that word out. And how do you explain to voters why we should use their tax dollars so Lebanese and Pakistani students can study at American universities, even though everybody in this room knows it's in our best interest? We're here tonight because we want the United States to be strong and respected around the world. We have troops fighting in Afghanistan, but they alone are not going to defeat terrorism. Our economy increasingly depends on foreign markets, but people in developing nations be, have to be able to buy what we want to sell. We're, de we're defending freedom of speech and religion, due process and women's rights, something we take for granted in this country. But they're under assault in ways none of us could have thought possible in the 21st century. Watch the horrific video of the Taliban shooting to death a woman. Watch these things and know that we have more to do. And we are facing challenges to our influence not seen since the Cold War. Now, Marcel and I are delighted to be at the same table with Secretary Albright and Secretary Powell. They've been outstanding defenders of the Foreign Service, but they've also been outstanding defenders of funding for foreign assistance. They've brought credibility to this. That's critically important. I want to thank the both of you for all the help you gave me during the years you were secretaries. So that's <laughs> But let me also thank the U.S. Global Leadership Coalition. You don't get thanked enough. Trust me. We use you every way we can on the Hill for our common goals. So this award means an awful lot. Thank you very, very much. <laughs>